The hardest part, honestly, the, the most time consuming is you being in the word of God and allowing it to shape you. Yes. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're just teaching them good principles and moral principles because you don't really know the kingdom of God. Funny, it's, it's not funny. It's awesome when science uncovers the, the beautiful creation of God. Um, it's it's funny when they take credit for it. That <laughs> started with my five-year-old. I heard my five-year-old telling her friends that my daddy knows everything. And I was like flattered by that. And then I was like, well, if only she knew. I Not only do I not know everything, I don't know most things. Like <laughs> I, I know very little. Um, ben Roethlisberger was hoping to talk to you. Would that be okay? And I was like, and Layla knows that I was like just fangirling big time, you know, 20 minutes earlier in our hotel room. So I'm, I tried to this is NCC Unplugged. Welcome to another episode of NCC Unplugged. We have a special episode today as we have an interview, but right next to me is Matt Mastriani, our Director of Tech and Media here at NCC. Yeah, what's up, Jeff? Thanks for having me once yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. And so, like I said, our special guest today is Jared Lopes. Jared, you are an author, podcaster, a uh, podcast called Dad Tired. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Uh, first, I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm a adopted yeah. son of his. Um, I say that on purpose, not to be cheesy, but because um, I'm trying my best to remind myself that that's my truest identity. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I find that um, when I rest in that identity, all the other labels that I have um, seem to go better. So mm. I'm a son of God, loved by him, and then um, also a husband to my wife, Layla. Uh, we've been married for 14 years. And we have four kids. Um, my son is th- just turned 13 this week, and mm. um, which is crazy. And then all the way down to a three-year-old. So I've got teens and toddlers. Okay. And, wow. Uh, yeah. And I run a ministry called Dad Tired, which is we're just trying to help guys figure out what it looks like to love Jesus themselves. And mm-hmm. then as they do that, um, help their families do the same. Yeah. So how did you get into a ministry like that? Um, not on purpose. Um, <laughs> it was totally by accident. I, I was a, in pastoral ministry at a church, local church, for about 12, 13 years. Okay. Um, ended up planting a church, and which sounds fun, and it, um, it went sideways. It was not fun at all. It was mm. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, and I say that kind of, you know, half-hearted, but it, or you know, light-hearted. But it was, um, it was actually a really, really painful season for me. Um, deeply, the person I had helped plant the church with, he ended up getting disqualified from ministry. Mm. Um, and then in that process, it had really hurt me. And I had made a commitment that I'm never going to be in ministry again. I was hurt by him and um, was really jaded by church work after that point. And my wife and I were going through um, really, really difficult season. I wanted to, my wife is so logical, like she just wanted to cross all the T's, dot all the I's, and um, just figure out logistically what we were going to do. And for me, I was going through identity. Like, it was all emotional. There was nothing logistical Mm -hmm. for me. It was all emotional. And so I was trying to connect with her emotionally, and she was just trying to figure out what to do logically um, and practically. And so that really started to separate us relationally. And um, to the point where, in my mind, I had kind of made the decision, I I think we're going to get a divorce, and um, Mm -hmm. I don't think this is going to work out for us. And it was in the middle of that time, um, we were fighting pretty much daily, but one day we were fighting and I had already resolved in my mind that we were going to end it in divorce. So I was being really hurtful. I was deep in sin. I was isolated. I was far from God. I was a terrible husband and dad. And so in that fight, I just thought, you know, I'm just going to, she's smarter than me. She can win. Like if we, if we try to go tit for tat here, she's going to beat me because she, she's always playing you know, chess and I'm playing checkers in a fight. (laughs) Um, and so in this fight, I just thought to myself, I'm just going to be mean. That was my tactic, honestly. Um, just to be mean and I'm not proud of that, but that was, that's where my head was at. And so I said something hurtful to her and she started to get tears in her eyes. And I was in such a dark spot in that time that I, I legitimately thought to myself, I'm winning this fight. And, um, she looked at me and she said, Jared, I just want you to know, I've been waking up in the middle of the night and I've been going into the living room and I've been praying for you. And I've been begging God to capture your heart again. Hmm. And uh, there's a verse in Romans that says it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. And I really feel like it was the kindness of God through my wife supernaturally. Like she didn't even want to be kind to me. She would look back at that moment and say that was hard for her to say that and do that. Um, But it was really her kindness that softened my heart, led me to repentance. And and Jesus started to woo me back to himself by his grace. Hmm. And I just started to talk about that. Like I, I wasn't the man I wanted to be. I'm, I wasn't the husband or dad I wanted to be, but 
felt like God was drawing me back to himself and I wanted to be committed to being stumbling my way forward to be the, the man that I feel like I want to be and that he's calling me to be. And that was, um, that's how dad tired started guys resonated with that. And, um, they said, I, I want to do that too. And I feel that too. And I always say God tricked me back into ministry. I had no plans to, to get back into it, but here I am, you know, that was almost a decade yeah. ago. So yeah. Cool. yeah. Part of his will and it, yeah. it happened. Yeah. I, I, I started listening to your podcast a while ago, and mm-hmm. uh, it, I I don't know what episode it was, but where you and your wife kind of retell that story, yeah. and just hearing from both of your point of view, very powerful, and mm-hmm. uh, to see where you're at now, and uh, we all have our struggles and everything still, but you know, just knowing where you came from to where you are now in your marriage with your kids and everything, that's that's a that's a God thing for sure. It's pretty so, wild. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. God's been so faithful. He's yeah. been so faithful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So both Matt and I were dad tired uh, fans and know your ministry. Tell us, tell tell our listeners for those that have not heard of Dad Tired, what is it? What does the community look like? Um, well, when I first started almost a decade ago, there wasn't that many. There weren't that many resources for dads. It was mm-hmm. online. Um, mm-hmm. It was pretty scarce. There since have become more, but it's still scarce in comparison to all the other, you know, niches out there for moms and kids and stuff. There, there's not a lot of men's ministry stuff. Um, and so, one, we're just trying to provide some kind of men's ministry, like a be a, a resource for men to be pointing back to the gospel. But I think what separates Dad Tired from any, um, maybe any other ministries out there is we're really a community. I think that because that tired started in a season of me being in such pain that it set this um, unintentionally set kind of the ethos of the ministry, which was it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to share your struggles. And it's, and in the midst of that, we're not just going to kind of have a pity party. We're going to point each other back to the gospel, Mm -hmm. Um, but it's okay to be vulnerable. And Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to do that again. That was unintentional, but I think the Lord used that to really create that tired is yes, it's a recent, we have podcasts and we have books and, conferences and all that but I, I think more than all of that it's a it's a community of men who are trying to say i'm a, i want to be honest with other men and share where i'm at vulnerably and in hopes that you'll point me back to the gospel so that i can run this race really well and so that's really what i think that tired is is beyond all the resources it's a community of like-minded men mm-hmm. so having this community that you are kind of in charge of oversee, you know, help facilitate and everything traveling, you know, doing your, uh, the events and, and and just everything else. How do you, how do you balance all of this between running this operation, being a husband, being a father of four? Um, I'm a father of two and, you know, I I add two more to that. That's why. Um, so, so what's, what's it look like for you to balance all of that? And, you know, is there any, any tips or tricks that, that you can share? Yeah. I mean, I don't really think that my life is any more crazy or busy than everybody else is. I mean, we're all, whether you're eight or 80, like everybody has a busy life, you know? So, I think I'm I'm trying to figure it out in the same way that you are and that every guy listening, every mm-hmm. person listening to this mm-hmm. is, is what does it look like to pay our bills and to try to pursue my spouse and be intentional with each of my kids and uh, love my neighbors, you know, like it, we're all, it's, and, and get them to soccer and cook dinner. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's insane. Life is crazy for all of us. Um, I, I have put more pressure on myself to cut out the things that just don't make sense. So I had a mentor tell me, Um, You are a husband, you are a father, and you're a disciple. Those are the three roles that you can say confidently, God has called me to this. Vocationally, my my role might change, hobbies might change, friends will come and go. But those things for sure I know I'm called to, husband, father, disciple. Mm -hmm. And so if it doesn't match those categories, and it falls outside of those categories, I should should have the freedom to say no pretty quickly. Um, And sometimes I've... <clears throat> excuse me, I find myself saying yes to too many things that don't fit those categories. Mm-hmm. And then I'm just drained on time. I'm drained on energy and I'm not giving my best in those three things. So, um, that's, that's the first thing is just being okay to say no to the things that you, that God has not called you to even good things mm-hmm. saying yes to the wrong things is a bad thing. Um, and so I want to say yes to the things that God has actually called me to. Um, and then the other thing is too, like, I, I don't do any of those three things, husband, father, disciple, especially my role as husband and my role as father. I don't do those anywhere near as well as I want to 
when I'm not personally close to Jesus? Mm-hmm. And I know that's like a church, churchy kind of like cliche answer, but that, that's just the reality. Like if I am not mm-hmm. actually following in love with Je- following Jesus and falling more in love with him, repenting of my sin constantly, um, allowing the gospel to saturate my heart, my life, my, my mind, I'm just not a, as good of a husband as I want to be to my wife. I'm not nearly as good of a dad. And so the tip is, is like, I, I know this will frustrate some people. It's just like, no, come on, give us a real tip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the real tip truly is like, seek the, seek first the kingdom of God mm-hmm. and his righteousness and all these other, like you will be a better dad. You'll be a better wife. You'll be a better husband and man. So, um, probably not the answer everybody wants to hear, but I, I believe that with, you know, the deepest parts of my being. Yeah. 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 Everybody wants a quick hack. You know, yeah. that, that's the, the world we live in. But yeah, that's a, that's a, a great Hacks response. won't make your, your kids will recognize hack. hacks. Hacks mm-hmm. won't make everlasting impacts on our children and our wife. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's the deep soul change, the slow soul change that is going to have the eternal impacts that we actually want in our families. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. So thinking about that, that role of being a disciple of, of Jesus, um, how does that, what, what does that look like? How, or how does that identify, identity play out as a father? So what does it look like to be a disciple while, um, you know, being a parent? And, you know, does the dad tired community, what, what's out there to help uh, with that further? Yeah, I think that there's kind of two things come to mind when I, when I think about that. First one is um, we talk about the things that we love. Like if you have a conversation mm-hmm. with anyone that's longer than five minutes, you will learn what they love pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, people like to share what they love. And I was just we, – we had a neighborhood barbecue last night. And so our, all of our neighbors were sat out together on our lawn chairs, and we ate some burgers and hot dogs and stuff. And w- within that time, I learned what all of my neighbors love, what's, yeah. on their, what's actually on their heart. And so we just naturally, you don't have to try to teach somebody how to talk about the things that they're passionate about. They ju- it just kind of bleeds out of them. And so that's what, going back to what I was saying, like, um, I, this, this is why I have to love Jesus first. You don't have to, I don't have to give you 10 tips on how to be a dad that teaches your kids about Jesus and talks to your kids about Jesus if you actually love him, mm-hmm. if, you've, if you're being changed by him. And so first fall in love with Jesus, and you'll, you'll find that naturally you just will start talking to your kids about Jesus. And that leads to the second thing, which is um, marks of discipleship for me are how often am I bringing the kingdom in front of my kids, meaning the world teaches our kids the kingdom of the world easily, like without trying. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can just send your kids out for the day, and they're going to learn all kinds of values that the world has on TV, on their iPads, from their friends, from school like from advertisements at the grocery store, the world is going to bombard them with, here are the things that we value as a kingdom. And so for me as a dad, as my primary role, we homeschool. And so I I think through myself as an educator, I I wanna be a protector. I wanna be a provider, make sure that they have a place to sleep tonight and food to eat. But my biggest role is I want to be a disciple maker. I want to Mm -hmm. point my kids to the kingdom of God. And what I, the way I'm doing that, trying to do that, is I'm looking for as many 15-second moments throughout the day mm-hmm. to point their eyes back to Jesus. And really what I'm just doing is I'm contrasting this world with the kingdom of God, the kingdom of this world with the kingdom of God. So uh, your friends just did this. They bullied each other. They didn't share. They hit each other. They lied to each other. That's what the kingdom of this world does. Here's what we do as citizens in the kingdom of God. So I'm just constantly trying to contrast. And I think that's what we do as parents. Our primary role is disciple-makers, and you're just constantly contrasting. That's what Jesus did. Mm-hmm. You've heard it said this, yeah. but yeah. I tell you in my kingdom, we do this. He was just contrasting for them all the time. You're citizens in a different kingdom, and here's what this kingdom looks like. And so I think that's, I, I, for me, that seems to like simplify disciple making as, as easy as we can make it um, for, as a parent. Yeah, and I think it takes a lot of excuses away because our probably main excuse as a parent is I'm just so busy. I don't have 30 minutes to sit down yeah. and do a full Bible study. I don't, I don't have the tools. And you're just saying, look, these 15 second moments yeah. are what you need. And we all have those and we just need to be intentional about them. Mm-hmm. That's what Deuteronomy said. Deuteronomy six, yeah. as yep. you walk, as you talk, as you lie down, as you sleep, like what, as you eat, uh, just talk, teach the kingdom, teach these things to your children. And then we see Jesus actually modeling Deuteronomy six. So he's in a wheat field and he's like, look at the wheat. Let's talk about, mm-hmm. you know, let's use this. Uh, look at this child. The kingdom's like a child. You know, it's just like whatever came up, 
he's using 15 second moments. I don't know how long the actual moments were, but you know, spontaneous moments mm -hmm. to teach his disciples about the kingdom. So yeah, you're, you're totally right. There is no excuse. Um, as far as time goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Really good point. And I, that, that can be daunting as a, as a dad and a husband and a father. Yeah. Where you're, you're looking for those longer periods of time to be like, okay, I, I need to be intentional about this. So to be intentional, it's going to take, you know, an hour mm -hmm. and you know, that I, I love the, the 15 second clip, you know, almost a, a YouTube short version of yeah. uh, pointing our kids toward yeah. God. Yeah. The hardest part, honestly, the, the most time consuming is you being in the word of God and allowing it to shape you. Yes. Otherwise mm -hmm. you're just teaching them good principles and moral principles because you don't really know the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so for, as a dad, like I, I need to actually know what does God say? What does right. those words Absolutely. say? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what is his reputation like? And then I'm kind of, especially with young kids, I'm trying to take what I'm learning from the scriptures filter it and now put it in real life application for them eventually like i have a 13 year old he should be reading the word himself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now i'm coming alongside of him as he reads um but for little ones i have a, I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old you know they can't even read and mm -hmm. so i'm just teaching them like here's i'm interpreting scripture for them and putting it in real life application All right yeah, okay. absolutely so to talk about the dad tired podcast a little bit um you know, you've interviewed a lot of people. I've listened to most of them, if not all of them. Oh, I wow. love when you and your wife are on at the same time. And I've uh, every <laughs> once in a while I shoot the the link over to my wife. You just, yeah, yeah, yeah it's really good conversations that you guys have. So because she's smarter than me. Remember I said well, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I do remember <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. We'll make sure we send this clip over to her. So yeah. she, <laughs> she knows. Um, I'm sure she already knows that. But oh, uh, she knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so what? Of all the people that you've interviewed or been around for the podcast, is there one specific interview that stands out that really was impactful um, for you? Or You know, it's funny, but I get that question all the time, mm -hmm. and I'm, I never have a good answer for it. Yeah. And it's for a couple of reasons. One, we've just done so, – there's so many. Like, we, we have over 400 episodes. Mm -hmm. I think we're coming up to 500, and uh, there's just been so many – um, wise and faithful disciples of Jesus who have come on and shared a lot of wisdom with us. Yeah. For me personally, one of the most impactful ones, and I, I forget his name, but he's a friend of yours. He lost his wife. Um, mm, Chris. Chris. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That I was here at the church working on some stuff, listening to that, mm. and, you know, eyes welling up with tears yeah. and everything. Just trying to imagine what he went through. It's yeah. just, yeah. It's unimaginable. Mm -hmm. it's un yeah. Just for a brief, you know, context for the listeners. Yeah, so sure. he's a, Absolutely. He, he's a dad of uh, five. And at the time, I think all of them were under seven, maybe eight. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of young kids and his wife with the newest one, she started, it started out as really kind of a postpartum depression that led into some um, just deep kind of mental crisis. And she ended up taking her life. Um, really unexpectedly and um, left him as a single dad with five young children. And yeah, that he has become a very, very close friend mm -hmm. um, who I love deeply, but yeah, just unimaginable. unimaginable. Yeah. But yeah. he's since remarried. Guy's been mm -hmm. so faithful yep. and um, he's doing great now. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. Thinking about that, maybe a little bit talking about mental health with our kids. Um, you know, sometimes as dads, we can be a little standoffish and, um, we'll just get it together, you know, push through. How do you deal with that and your kids and making sure you're checking in on their mental health, making sure, hey, things going good at school, everybody treating you all right? Um, have you found a, a groove with that? Well, first we're homeschooled parents, so the other okay. kids yeah. treating them bad are uh, their siblings, which yeah. they're getting disciplined on. <laughs> <laughs> um, the bully gets uh, disciplined pretty right. quickly around here. Um yeah. So we, one thing I've, you said, you know, I have two and I don't, I can't imagine what it'd be like having four. It is in some ways I do feel like it's easier because, uh, they, they have each other that they're constantly playing with and you kind of mm -hmm. get, you get into a rhythm of chaos. <laughs> um, but there is sometimes I feel like I, there's seasons in my parenting where I'm parenting a herd, you know, mm -hmm. just like I'm, 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 it's like, I'm a, a teacher I'm trying to do a field trip, you know, and I'm just making sure they're all, all the heads are accounted for. Um, and, and so one thing I started to do is I actually started to take them each on individual walks. Um, mm -hmm. um, so every Sunday night is my son. He, he and I go on a walk. Monday mm -hmm. is my second, you know, and we just kind of work our way down the week. And then this has been the highlight of it. The, like they count down 
Um, when's my daddy walk? How many days, you know, the little ones, especially how many more days until the daddy walk? Very cool. Um, and that's been my way of just checking it, man. It's been incredible how, how much, uh, our conversations, how deep our conversations go in those short walks. And somebody asked me like, what do you say? What kind of questions? And honestly, I've actually made kind of a game of it. They're in the other room, my two older ones. So I, I don't want them to hear me know my strategy here, but, <laughs> um, I purposely don't ask anything. Like I just will start walking and because it's the reason I'm doing it is because I'm so fascinated at how much they will literally just start talking mm -hmm. and, and I don't have to start it. Even my 13 year old who are 13 year olds are notorious for like good, fine, right. you know, yeah. what, you know, the one word answers. Um, I won't even, I won't even ask a question. We'll just start walking and it probably takes 10 seconds into the walk where he just, all of them mm -hmm. just start sharing something. And then from there, it's usually follow up questions. Um, and sometimes I, I don't, I don't always want it to be a time where I'm like giving advice or instructions. Like I really just want it to be a time where we're together mm -hmm. and I really want them to think like, man, it was just nice to be with my dad and kind of build that relational equity so that later I can give advice. But, um, that's been my way of checking in on their heart. Um, talking about, sorry, I'm rambling yep. here a little bit. That's but, right. You're fine. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of mental health stuff, actually my two older, we, we just came out of a conversation 30 minutes ago, I was sitting downstairs with them. And then I, before I walked up here to do this interview, um, but it, I was talking to them about the five, five things that the really scientifically, even from a secular perspective that they've nailed down to really bring better mental health. And so we talked about getting outside mm -hmm. exercise, having some kind of purpose, um, a goals to achieve. Do you have mm -hmm. community? Um, are there people around you who know you and love you? Uh, I'm not going to be able to remember all five on the spot as I put myself here on the spot. <laughs> um, uh, did I say diet? So diet and diet. exercise were, I think, two different ones. One was the food you eat, but also are you moving mm -hmm. daily? Um, I can't remember all, all the fifth one that I said. Diet, exercise, community, purpose. Uh, there's one other one that I totally, I can't, I'm totally blanking on right now. But those were the five things we're talking about. And literally as I, I was, as I was starting this interview, I saw my 13 year old and my 11 year old brother and sister, they were exercising in his room together. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, they just immediately went to like go, you know, yeah. move together. So yes. Yeah, so by the way, that, that I said that's all secular, but we know as Christians, that's mm -hmm. how God designed us, right? Like that mm -hmm. it's, it's holistic health that that's not like, uh, atheists don't get to take credit for that. Like, see, this is, this is how we figure it out. Like, it's like, no, you just figured out how God wired humanity right. to flourish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, this is definitely a God thing in order for us to, um, become the humans that he created us to be in. Yeah, it's funny you say that because in my own mental health struggles and issues I've had mm. over the past couple of years, it's like you go to a, a therapist or whatever and everything that they're telling you is pointing to something that God already said. Totally. And I just had that conversation a few days ago too with uh, with some of my friends about that. It's like, oh, gee, you mean God knew what he was doing whenever, you know, X, exactly. Y, and Z? And, uh, it's funny. It's it's not funny. It's awesome when science uncovers the, the beautiful creation of God. Yeah. Um, it's it's funny when they take credit for it. <laughs> yeah. Are, like yeah. like they yeah. are the smart ones. But really, you're just... It's a treasure hunt to see how God has designed things. And, yeah, yeah, for sure. Even, yeah. you know, telling my wife, like, get out there and we, we take mindfulness walks, you know, mm -hmm. no, no earbuds, just listen to God's creation yeah. and take account of what's around you. And, uh, she did that for the first time today, this morning, actually, oh, wow, I've been cool. doing it for a while and, yeah. and she was just like, wow, that's, that's something that's different. Like it's, totally. it's kind of wild. Yeah. So, and science backs that up yes, like that, like exactly. it, again, from a completely yeah. secular perspective, they've researched that and it actually does something to your mental health. Mm -hmm. yeah, we live close yeah. to the ocean. So I'll just go jump in the ocean and dude, what that 10 minutes just being in the ocean yes. mm -hmm. just completely changes my mental yeah. game. Yeah. 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 You moved. You actually moved from uh, Seattle area, is that Oregon? Or, or, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, Portland. Yeah. I mean, Portland, both yeah. are both yeah. crazy areas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take places. your pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but now you're out on the uh, East Coast enjoying yeah, yeah. enjoying. I live in South Carolina now. Yeah. It's a it's it's incredible. There's still some things, man. I'm getting used to like um, my window here, right in front of me, faces a pond, like a community pond. And, uh, there's just a gator that swims across this pond. So sometimes I'll be in this inter like doing these interviews or podcasts and just see a gator. And I'm like, 
Dude, I'm on the West Coast. Like, that's where I'm born and raised. I am not used to seeing a dinosaur just swimming yeah. in the back. <laughs> Still trips me out. So in the maybe last five minutes that we have uh, with you, Jeff, you want to yeah, touch mean, on some things? You didn't, you didn't ask us to plug your book, but I'm going to a little bit. Um, oh, thanks, man. Partly because we've talked, I think, around it a little bit when you say, hey, just these, these short short times we have other kids to do some contrasts. And in this book, as I read through it, you know, short book. Uh, for mm-hmm. younger kids mm-hmm. and it's it's just redirecting the conversation you know the yeah. book is about the child looking up to their dad as their hero and the dad redirecting a bit to say hey i have a hero too yeah so talk about this li- book a little bit and your inspiration for it if you would yeah it started with my five-year-old i heard my five-year-old telling her friends that my daddy knows everything and i was like <laughs> flattered by that and then i was like well if only she knew i not only do i not know everything i don't know most things like <laughs> <laughs> i know very little and, uh, and so, and the, the, I have four kids, but the, the one on the front of the book is my five-year-old and okay. it's really built around the idea that she just, at that age, especially she does think I'm her hero. Like I can mm-hmm. do anything. I can fix anything. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, I love that and I'm flattered by that, but I know how broken I am. I know how messed up I am and how much I fall short. And I want her to have a better hero than me. I want to mm-hmm. love her and I want to mm-hmm. be the best that I can be for her but I want her to have an even better hero. And I want her to know that I need a hero, um, that I'm not the hero of this family, that Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I really wrote that book for my kids to just be able to point them back to saying like, everyone in this house, every single person under this roof needs Jesus, uh, even daddy. And so that's that's the whole premise of the book is that uh, even daddies have heroes and even daddies need heroes and it's Jesus and he's way better than daddy is. Yeah, 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 no, that's That's a great great point. So as we finish up, we're Norton Christian Church, just outside of the Pittsburgh area, yeah, and a big Steeler community and everything. And yeah. rumor has it that you may or may not be friends with a pretty famous uh, Pittsburgh Steeler, uh, Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roth, big Ben. How how did that come to uh, to happen? Yeah, man, it's, it was so funny. We I went to an event. Um, I guess it was about two years ago now, and um, it was a very small event, and. When we got there, I was w- I was with Layla, my wife, and they gave kind of a um, uh, I I'm blanking on the word roster is the <laughs> feels right because it's we're talking about football, but that's sure. not the right word. You know, everyone that's going to be at the event, mm-hmm. and Ben's name was on there, and so I'm we're sitting in our little room, it's like a little hotel room, and I'm like reading this, and I'm like Ben Roethlisberger is going to be here. And, uh, and Layla was like, who's that? I'm like, babe, stop. <laughs> I'm like, what are you big Ben? She's like, I got nothing. I'm like, babe, ba-, you know, I'm just like losing my mind yeah, in the hotel yeah. room. I'm like, big Ben is going to be here. I'm Googling pictures. I'm showing her YouTube videos. Of the, and she's like, she's like, I have never heard of him. Nothing. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, we, that was like, you know, it, when we got there pretty quickly, we had this first session of this event and I'm sitting there and the, the director of the event comes up to me and says, uh, Jared, um, Ben Roethlisberger was hoping to talk to you. Would that be okay? And I was like, and Layla knows that I was like just fangirling big time, you know, 20 minutes earlier in our hotel room. So I'm like, I try to play cool. I'm like, yeah, sure. of course. And so yeah. I walk up anyway, he had just read the dad tired book. His wife had mm-hmm. actually gotten it for him and he enjoyed it. And so he said, Hey, I just wanted to meet you at the book. The book, you know, um, was really helpful for me. And so that was the start of us meeting. And then we ended up having multiple meals together and spending time together. Mm-hmm. We were really just hit it off. Um, we're, uh, we're, we're both like-minded in the same goals. Like we just, he, that guy is one of the most intentional dads I've ever met in my life mm-hmm. that he is. I've spent time with him. We vacationed together. I've spent lots of time with his family and he had, um, I've met very few men who are as intentional as he is to, to be the husband and father that God is calling him to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and what he does behind closed doors and private that nobody would see, um, is, is some of the most respectful things I've, I've ever seen in a man. So mm-hmm. I just I I I think very highly of Ben, and he's um, I'm honored to call him a good friend now. Yeah, that's awesome. Very competitive uh, pool too. I, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He definitely we played pool together, and he put me in my place pretty yeah, quickly for yeah. sure. He doesn't sure. like losing. It turns out no, no, <laughs> does not. But I, th- that just points back to God the the way He worked on him, mm-hmm. changed His totally. life and everything yeah. from where Chased He was to now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Chased so. him down, and he loves Jesus, and he yeah. is working mm-hmm. hard to be the disciple God's called him to be. Yeah. I'm really yeah. proud of him, and. Again, thankful to be his friend. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's awesome to see you know two strong Christian men who are very intentional about being a father and a husband uh, in both you and Ben. So that, that's mm. really encouraging for the rest mm. of us as well. Thanks, um, man. 
before we wrap up, do you have any uh, anything you need to, to plug or let let any of the uh, Dad Tired community know about? Yeah, no, no plugs, man. I just um, seek Jesus. You know, mm-hmm. that's yeah. that's more important than anything <laughs> I have going. If you if you're a man listening to this and you're like, yeah, I don't feel like I have a lot of resources in my journey as a man. Obviously, we'd love to if we can help you come be part of the Dad Tired community. Um, we've got books and podcasts and things like that. And then if you're a wife, that's we have some wives who join in who are just like, what are the guys talking about? Like, what mm-hmm. does my husband really think? Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you're a wife listening or a mom, um, it might be helpful for you just to kind of peek behind the curtain to a guy's brain. Um, we found that that has been a lot of help, been helpful for a lot of women in, mm-hmm. as well. So anyway, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm grateful to get some time with you guys and thanks for yeah. letting me be here. Yeah, Yeah, Judge, we really appreciate you coming on. And um, I so appreciate the authenticity that you have in your podcast as I listen. Mm -hmm. And just um, it's it's very rare to hear men share their hearts and their struggles. And so really appreciate you doing that and Mm -hmm. building other guys up as you do. So uh, for all those listening, really appreciate you listening to another episode of NCC Unplugged. Thanks again, Jared. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 845 and 1030 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 